Good morning. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a joy to come in your presence again this morning. We are going to be reading from the Word of God. It's taken from the book of Kings, chapter, 1 Kings chapter 20. And I'll be reading just one verse, but I'll be referring to the, some verses before. The message this morning will be entitled... The God of the hills is still the God of the valley. The reading, as I said, is taken from the book of Kings, 1 Kings chapter 20 and verse 28. And it reads, And there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, the Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valley. Therefore, will I deliver all this great host into thine hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. <clears throat> for you said the entrance of your word bringeth light. So, Father, today as we minister this word, I pray it brings light to some soul today. I pray, Lord God, that it bring healing. Lord God, it bring relief in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. As I said, I've chosen for a topic this morning. The God of the hills is the God of the valleys. My mind goes back to this story because of the situation that the children of Israel found themselves in. It said that the king of Israel at that time, Ahab, was in a pretty, a pretty deep predicament. The Bible tells us that 30 and 2 kings surrounded him. He had a strong hold on Israel. And it seems like there was no way out. And Israel was really in deep predicament. But the thing about it is that a man came from God. A man came from God and told the king, Hey king, don't worry. You don't have to fret. Because the God that we serve, he's able. That this messenger, this prophet came to this king and he said, listen, God said he's going to deliver you. The king turned around and he asked the prophet, he said, how shall he deliver me? And the prophet said, by the young men. One of the things I want to mention here today is that God is calling young men. God wants to work our work in young men. You can rest assured when the word of God says he called young men because they are strong. And the king could have rested at ease because at that point in time he knew he had several young men in order that God can use. The Bible tells us that God used just these few men and he delivered the children of Israel that day. The thing about it is that sometimes you feel when you're in the mountaintop and the air is rare. When you're in the mountaintop and victory is at hand. And you are walking in victory and you're walking in, in, in a high. That God is your God. God is your God. And you feel that, hey, I am at the top of the world. I call that mountaintop experiences. And you are there and everything going right. But you see, there comes a time, just as the children of Israel had found out a little later down in that portion of scripture, they found out that, hey, we have to step out from the mountaintop. And they journeyed, and the Bible tells us in that same Kings that when the host of the Assyrians gathered round the, the children of Israel, the children of Israel looked like just two flocks. So sometimes your enemy surrounds you when you get into the valley. Because it's not all the time we live in the, the, the mountain. It's not all the time we enjoy the mountaintop experience. Sometimes we come down to the, the valley. 
And I know sometimes the valley experience is the experience that causes men to think. And here you have the children of Israel being surrounded by 30 and two, two kings. And between you and I, sir, that doesn't mean just one or two. That means a whole host. Sometimes your problems seems more than you can bear. When you're in the, the valley, it seems that that's where all your troubles are. For some of you, you may not know what a, a valley experience is. But permit me to share with you a little bit about a valley. When you're sick and in bed and can't move, I consider that a valley. When your children are giving trouble, day after day, I consider that a valley. When you can't find your way out of deep trouble, I consider that a valley. I don't know what your valley may seem like. I don't know what your valley may look like. But I know that valley comes. Whether you are Christian or you are unsaved, all go through valleys. In fact, the psalmist David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, at times you feel that you're going to die in your valley. At times, life throws some deep, deep valleys at us. But the thing about it is that I know for a fact that the God of the mountaintop. You see, the king of Assyria thought that, hey, because the God that the Israelites serve is a God of only the mountaintop. Let us get them to the valley and we will deal with them there. But I'm here to tell you that that same God is, who is the God of your good times is still the God of your bad times. A few points I want to raise with you is sometimes when you find yourself in a valley, you need to know what to do. As the children of Israel realized that their God is a God not only of the mountaintops, but when you get into the valley, you need to trust in this God. In fact, it's so, so, so sometimes you're, you're placed in situation that you wonder, hey, can my God deliver me? Your mountaintop experience is so vastly different from your valley experience. You wonder if God can deliver me. But I'm here this morning to let you know. I'm here this morning to let you know that we know of a God. We know of God, the God that is able. In fact, hear what he says in the word. He says, hey, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Sir, madam, I don't know which path or how deep your valley is. But one thing I could know and that I know for a fact is that this God can deliver you. There's a next story I want to, to share with you. It's about a man in a valley experience. I remember... In the first, in the book of the second book of Samuel, chapter nine, uh, verse four, when David wanted to, to to give tribute to a friend of his, a dear friend, Jonathan, David asks the question. David asks, "Is there anybody that I can show my love to?" That remaining of the house of Saul and his best friend, Jonathan. The report came back to him that there is one. There is only one, a son, but he is crippled. Sometimes you're in your valley and the situation may cripple you. But I'm here to tell, tell you today, sometimes you may think that, hey, I am alone in my situation. I am alone in the problems I'm facing. But I'm here to tell you there is good news around the corner. The Bible says that David asked for him. You see, when David found out where he was, you see, sometimes we feel that where we are is only the place we can be. But listen, David found out that, that, that this lad was in Lodibar. And David found out that this son was in Lodibar. Today, a lot of us might feel that we are in Lodibar. We may feel that, hey, where we are might be a good place because Lodibar for this lad, because he was being chased out of his inheritance. 
He, he left his inheritance and was staying at a comfortable place. But it was not the place that God had meant for him to be. Some of you may feel that you are in Lodibar. Sir, sometimes it seems that the word Lodibar to you, it means that I'm living underneath the bar. But I'm here to let you know that God has a plan for you. There's a way out of your Lodibar. David showed this lad some mercy. David told this lad that, hey, you will dine at my table. You know what it is for the king to say, hey, you don't have to eat the crumbs anymore. You don't have to eat what, what, what everybody's leftovers. You can eat from the best. And I'm here to let you know today, whether you are in your deepest valley or you are in Lodiba, it doesn't matter. God has prepared something better for you. You see, we believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. And all that it entails. In fact, Jesus himself said that I'm here to heal the sick. In fact, I'm given power over all diseases. Sir, so, madam, I don't know what your Lodi bar may be or what your valley may be. But one thing I know for sure, that we serve a God that is able to be with you wherever the circumstances are. Some people may wonder how to get out. You're, you're, you're kicking around, you're looking around, and there seems to be no answer. Today I'm here to let you know Jesus is the answer. Young man, you are strung out on drugs. Madam, you don't know where the money for the next rent will come from. And you are deep, deep, deep in your valley. I'm here to tell you it's time to trust Jesus. Why trust Jesus? Because the Bible tells us that he is the way. The Bible tells us that he is the truth. In fact, if there is anyone else that can or anyone who can take you out of your valley, it is Jesus. As I testified before, I was in my valleys. I remember when I was in my valley and I felt so depressed and alone. When I was in my valley, I felt that, hey, the whole world was against me. But now, I realize that all I needed to do was to trust this Jesus. You see, for a long time, we have been calling on Jesus all the wrong ways. I heard a story about a man who, who always cursed this child and said, Jesus Christ! One day, something happened to that man, and he called out on the Lord Jesus Christ himself. His son came running. I am not talking about the curse words we use. I'm talking about a man behind that name. In fact, what the word of God tells us in Matthew is that he shall be given a name, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. His name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The first thing that you need to get out of, in fact, the first valley you need to get out of is the valley of sin. A lot of us for years, we've been languishing in this valley. For years, we've been languishing in the valley of pity and valley of sin. But I'm here to let you know this morning, there is a way out. I'm here to let you know this morning that in this valley that you are in, I don't know it's a, if it's a financial valley and you see like, hey, the economy is getting bad and getting worse and you don't know what to do. You don't know which way to turn. I'm here to let you know. Jesus said in his words, in fact, God said in his word, I will supply all your needs. So whatever the circumstances is, the man we are trusting in is Jesus. I remember the story where, where blind Bartimaeus was in his predicament. He was in his valley. Blind Bartimaeus was in such a predicament that he had no way out. Sometimes when you're in your valley and friends you think may who or wants to, to console you instead of consoling you, they carry you deeper down. But Job, I remember Job in his time when Job was there in his predicament. And one thing I understand is that predicament or trouble likes trouble. So it seems that you're in your trouble and instead of people coming to help you out, they come and they put more trouble on you. But I'm here to let you know, the, the man called Jesus Christ is willing and able. 
He says, cast all your cares upon me. You see, you cannot cast your cares upon somebody who doesn't care because it seems like more pressure. But Jesus cares. Jesus cares about your valley. Jesus do, don't d discriminate against you when it comes to your valley, especially your valley of sin. He don't discriminate. But what he says is that he came to seek and to save. You're in your valley this morning and you need a way out. Jesus is the way out. Jesus Christ is the only way out. You see, when things are good and you're on the mountaintop, you may not think about Jesus. When things are good and you're on your mountaintop and enjoying life, uh, the money is in the bank, uh, the car, the new car is in the car porch, you wouldn't think about Jesus Christ. But there comes a time that you come down from that mountain and you need to cross the plains. You need to get from one stage to another. And sometimes when you're in this valley, that is when trouble comes. I'm here to let you know that fighting this battle alone is not easy. Fighting this battle alone is not possible. Sometimes, in fact, before I accepted Jesus Christ, I tried fighting my battles alone. In my valley, I remember particularly one Easter, I was so, so depressed. This was before I gave my life to Jesus. I just lost my job. And I remember clearly sitting uh, in the, uh, not the esplanade, but by the, the library then, had the library uh, amphitheater then. And I was feeling so alone, so depressed. In fact, there had people there and in the midst of the people, I was still alone. This valid experience is not an easy experience. That's why the psalmist David says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But David had something on his side. David had someone in his boat. David had someone in his calling. He said, Yea, I will, I will turn my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Where is your help coming from this morning? Who giving you help this morning? You went to your banker for help, but your banker can't help you. You went to the best uh, psychologist on the island. Some of you went to the best doctors on the island. But still, they can't help you. You went to the best uh, that says, oh, they say that they are the best. Maybe the best bush doctor. But they can't help you. Who will you turn to in your valley? You need to know this. Because watch me. Some people, one, in fact, one songwriter said, I was born so, but I ain't got dead so. If you're in your valley, maybe you need to change your mentality. Instead of saying, I'm going to die in my valley, you should say that I was born in this way. I may be in, in this predicament, but I'm not going to die this way. You see, at times we think that, hey, this valley life is the only life for me. We think that, hey, the position I find myself in, yes, I know that maybe you have put yourself in that position. But the thing is, you don't have to stay in that position. Valley experiences are not experiences for you to live there. You may think, because I'm in a valley, I have to live here. I have to stay here. And as I've described before, what I believe are some valleys. You may be in your valley right at this moment. But I have news for you. You don't have to stay in that valley. You don't have to live in that valley. Why should you want to live with that sickness? Why would you want to live in that predicament? Your husband is treating you bad. And when I say bad, I mean real bad. Nobody wants to live in that, that, that predicament. But I know of a man who is be, will be able to be there with you firstly. He is with you. How much of you have this man by your side? My mind goes to, 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 to Peter, uh, Peter when Jesus was, was sent them over by ship. And they saw Jesus coming on the water. Some of them thought it was a ghost. 
And when Peter said, hey, Lord, if it be thee, bid me to come. You see, sometimes you need somebody with you. I'm here to encourage you that that person should be Jesus Christ. Whatsoever your values, whatsoever your predicament is, the only man that you need in this ship is Jesus Christ. Why? You see, anybody else can fail. Anybody else or everybody else will fail. Your best friend, he can fail. Your neighbor can fail. But when you put your trust in Jesus Christ, he cannot fail. He cannot fail. As long as you put a little bit of faith. Now, now some people think that, hey, I must go to church first. I must change my, my, my way of living first. I'm saying do the opposite. Trust Jesus first. Because in your valley, you need to trust somebody. You need to put your trust in somebody. A burden is better shared by two. In fact, you, you look at the, the yokes that, that uh, in the old days they used to use around the, the, the cattle. In fact, when they're plowing a field, it's better done with two cattle being yoked together as one. Jesus says, take my yoke upon me. Learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. I rather carry a lighter burden than a heavy one. It's time to trust Jesus. It's time to take your eyes off your valley. You see, at times we're so focused in on our valleys. We can't see anything else. We can't see around the corner. At times our focus is so heavily on our circumstances. We can't take our eyes off of God. We cannot take our eyes off our circumstances in fact. And I'm here to let you know. It's time you take your eyes off your temporary circumstances. And turn it on to Jesus Christ. Turn your focus from your problems onto Jesus Christ. Why? Because he can help. He can help. The last point I want to leave with you is this. It's time to get out. I know you've been languishing in, in your situation for a while. But I'm here to let you know it's time to get out. You see, you might have understood that here, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the way. You may understand that. But you cannot see the time to come out. But I'm here to let you know this morning that this is your time. This is your time for deliverance. This is your time to get out. Now is your time. And I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. You see, I understand that, hey, when you're in a valley, it's hard. You need to know how to get out. But you need to, know, to, to want to get out. And I'm here to this morning with this broadcast to let you know it's time to get out. I want to pray for you. I really, there's somebody I know that this message is directed directly at. It's time to get out of your valley. Because you understand that on the mountain top, that is where the air is rare. That's where the water is fresh. That's where the experience with God is a genuine experience. But you are so tied up in your valley. It's time to get out. I want to pray for you. I believe that with all my heart that God wants to take you out of your valley. I believe with all my heart that God is able to take you out. God is able, not only winning, but he's able. So I'm going to pray with you this morning as we close this broadcast. I want you to just stretch your hand towards the television and I want to pray for you. You are in Lodibar. You are, you are in your valley, the lowest state in your life. And you saying, yes, I recognize this and I want to get out. Bow your hearts with me as I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. You see that man, that woman, that's stretching their hands towards that television now. And they're saying that they want to get out of Lodibar. They want to get out of this valley. It seems like their enemies are compassed round about them. 
And Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you send your angels right now and deliver. Whether it be sickness, I pray that you deliver now. Lord God, whether it be that woman in financial problems, I pray you deliver now in the name of Jesus. For Father, you said, whatsoever I ask, Lord God, that you are able to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you do the delivering in Jesus' name. God richly bless you until another time. This is your friend, and uh, I'm Curtis Collins, and just let God have his way in your life. Praise God. This program comes to you compliments of the Tobago Inspirational Network. To support this and other programs, we encourage you to give to TIN. Contributions can be made at any First Citizens Bank at account number 203-4679. We thank you for your support.